so this is about the examination of peripheral vascular disease and gangrene coming to the history taking part first we will talk about the age uh, when we are investigating about the peripheral vascular disease we have to first ask the person about the age uh, usually the atherosclerosis occurs in old age persons while the Berger's disease occurs in 12 to 40 years of age and young females usually encounter cervical syndrome as well as the Renaud's disease the diabetic are Arteriopathy will be seen in mid-age individuals and they will be usually either males or females also. The second thing we talk about is the limbs affected. Usually the lower limb will be affected in the case of the atherosclerotic gangrenes as well as in the Burgess disease. Okay, So A and B will cause the effect to the lower limbs coming to the upper limbs upper limbs will be affected in case of the Raynaud's disease as well as in the cervical syn uh, outlet syndrome and remember that whenever there is a sub superficial fingers gangrene then it you have to suspect the person to have Raynaud's disease or or uh, you can it can be a cervical rib or it can be a scalenous anterior syndrome or it can be syringomyelia or it can be even or it can be even the uh, the Morvan's disease coming to the next part that is whether it is bilateral or unilateral the bilateral disease uh, bilaterally both the limbs will be affected in the case of Burger's disease you must know that Burger's disease causes the uh, effect on the lower limbs while the Raynaud's disease causes the effect on the upper limbs Raynaud's disease is upper limb as well as bilateral while the Burgess disease is uh, bilateral as well as the lower limb coming to the atherosclerosis remember that this disease starts as a unilateral uh, unilateral one but at the end it becomes bilateral coming to the next thing that is about the uh, the mood of onset of the disease uh, remember that A, B and R that is atherosclerosis B for the Burgess disease as well as R for the the Raynaud's disease these all these three will be having a gradual onset and then they will be reaching the peak while the the embolic gangrenes uh, will be having a sudden onset and they will be remaining at the peak itself as shown in the graph while the diabetic gangrene will be a traumatic pain and it might be either due to a mild infection or it can be even due to the careless pairing of the toenails okay so coming to the next concept that is about the chief complaints okay in the chief complaint the first thing the person will uh, complain to the doctor is the pain in muscles and it can be the pain can be seen in the toes it can be seen in the foot it can be seen in the calf as well as in the thigh uh, so let us talk here uh, that is uh, in this region that is the pain the site of the pain usually you have to uh, ask to the patient the character of the pain the patient is suffering from you have to ask as well as you need to ask about the radiation of the pain where is that pain spreading to and if there is any increase in the pain on exercising and warmth why is this we are going to ask me it is for the classification which we are going to deal here okay so let us start with the there are two types of pain the person can incur that is one is called as the IC that is intermittent claudication while well, second one is the resting pain okay so intermittent claudification uh, coming to the definition this is the pain which develops only when muscles are working and the pain disappears when the exercise stops okay and uh, the resting pain is a continuous pain as well as it is a very much aching pain like crying of the dying nurse okay so let us discuss a little bit in detail about this the intermittent claudication claudio means I limp and but here this means uh, excess accumulation of the P substance which is uh, 
which is accumulated why because of the inadequate blood flow blood flow is not happening in this case that is in the peripheral vascular disease the blood flow is not happening as a result of which excess p substance accumulates and the person feels that there is a cramp where is, when is a cramp occurring what is meant by actually a cramp a cramp is a pain in the muscle okay so best example will be that yeah coming to the examples uh, the example is that the pain can be in the foot if there is damage or occlusion of the lower tibial artery or dorsalis pedis artery or the arteries of the uh, plantar arteries okay and uh, it can be in the calf region if there is a uh, damage uh, of, um, occurring in the femoropopliteal junction and uh, this is very common also and uh, it can be in the uh, thigh when there is occlusion at the superficial femoral artery and it can even take place in the buttocks uh, when there is uh, occlusion of the common iliac artery so we have discussed four regions first first is the foot second is the calf region third is the uh, thigh region and then the fourth one is the buttocks region okay uh, coming to the next thing that is the claudication distance the claudication distance means the that uh, the patient often complains that after walking a distance uh, he feels the pain and that pain and uh, that that distance uh, till which uh, he does not feel the pain after starting to walk is called as the claudication distance remember that this is the person is walking here and not he is not exercising okay so coming to the next thing that is about the classification uh, the grade one is the that wherein the person continues to walk but he does not have any pain okay and this is because of the collaterals that are formed okay and the second grade is uh, that the person continues to walk but he has a uh, pain but he can still walk with that pain third one is that the person is forced to stop while well, fourth grade is the burning and pins and needles sensation um, pain and it is a very severe and it is a kind of a resting pain okay remember that I, I have already told you that the resting pain is a continuous and aching pain okay uh, so and uh, this uh, grade 4 uh, uh, Boyd's classification will cause paresthesia Coming to the concept of physical examination, remember that there are two cases of ischemia. One is the severe acute ischemia and the other one is the chronic ischemia. In severe acute ischemia, there will be a lot of constitutional disturbances while in case of chronic ischemia, there won't be much constitutional disturbances. In case of severe acute ischemia, remember that there will be very high uh, pulse rate and uh, less um, BP will be there but no much changes are seen in the case of chronic ischemia.